Well, greetings, Titans. Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. Well, this new battery is the one that will take Tesla to new heights. This battery is so revolutionary that it'll see BMW race ahead of Tesla. I really do love the enthusiasm of some of the YouTube videos when they proclaim this is the next-gen battery technology. Well, sometimes I think we need a bit of a reality check. Well, for decades, battery development was driven by smartphones, tablets and laptops. While these were the first batteries used by the fledgling EV industry, they were not ideal. The smartphone industry is far more interested in size. Batteries had to be small, light and thin, as the phones, tablets and laptops got ever thinner and lighter. Outright power was not the top of their list as long as they were capable of running the apps. EVs had no such restriction. For them, power and range were the critical features. While smartphone batteries quickly developed into much thinner, flatter shapes, there were millions of the 18650 batteries. The 18 was the diameter in millimetres, the 65 was the height, and the zero was actually a circle, just to differentiate them from the pouch and the flat batteries. Well, these were used in laptops, power tools, mobility vehicles and the like. They're still popular to this day, as they're really cheap, absolutely abundant, and they offer a good power or energy density. However, they also suffered some issues. While Tesla and VW seem to understand the sheer energy packed into them and develop sophisticated heating and cooling systems for the battery packs, others like Nissan apparently did not. Their batteries were, well, simply air-cooled. Although there are still many around today, the majority have experienced degradation. Batteries do need to be looked after. But what was and still is needed is a dedicated EV battery, specifically designed for use in EVs, which offer first and foremost safety, no more overheating and fires. Then plenty of power, good lifespan, fast recharging rates, and finally, a really cheap price. This is unusual because a cheap price is normally a priority. But in the EV world, the price will only ever apply if the batteries can actually meet all of the other requirements first. Well, LFP batteries are entering a phase of rapid development uh, with CATL launching the Shenzhen Plus. But LFP is also limited in how far it can be developed. We actually need new technologies and new chemistry. So what is on offer? Well, we'll start off by having a look at solid state batteries. These are the holy grail of everyone. They're the talk of the town. This is where we want to be. And in fact, they do make an awful lot of sense. They are around. They've been working for quite some time and they are really good. They offer a significant amount more energy uh, within the same size battery compared to lithium ion batteries. And that means that EV batteries, which are solid state, would become more compact, would charge faster, weigh less and increase range. They're also believed to last longer. And it's something up to seven times more recharges during their lifetime, according to some, particularly Car Magazine. They're also believed to be safer because the solid electrolyte material is fireproof, unlike lithium-ion batteries, which are known to pose a fire risk. So what are they? Well, instead of relying on a liquid or a gel electrolyte, solid-state batteries use, well, obviously a solid electrolyte. Uh, these could be something like glass, ceramic, uh, or a solid polymer, um, or something like sulphites. And these have a number of advantages. They're quicker to make, they're safer, fire resistant, uh, very much more powerful. So what's holding them up? Well, the biggest drawback to date is uh, how difficult it is to scale them up into mass production. They're fine in testing and in limited production runs, 
but trying to get them into mass production is a nightmare. And mass production is desperately needed because only with mass production do we get the price down to an affordable level. These are showing great promise, but they're not there yet. There are some cars starting to introduce them, but they are run more as a test bed than as a, uh, an actual ad advanced technology. In some cases, they're not even that. In some cases, they are actually used as an advertising tool. If they can put a very expensive uh, but working solid state battery into a totally unknown car, they get a lot of kudos for having done that, even if they can't supply them. So they are still some distance away in time, um, but they hold great promise for the future. Now, the next contender is lithium sulfur batteries. Uh, this is um, fairly standard technology, but it uses sulfur for the battery's cathode. And this is much more sustainable than nickel and cobalt, typically found in the anode with lithium metal. Nickel and cobalt have a horrendous reputation for child slave labour, mining, etc. So anything that can be done to get rid of this is welcome. So there are companies that are already making uh, batteries with lithium sulphur. Uh, they are a reality already. They are looking to have them available maybe within the next three or four years. There's a company called Konamix, and that is an electric vehicle battery manufacturer. And they are saying that they could also be used to power aircraft, trains, along with energy storage. They are more efficient than lithium ion batteries, and that could increase the range and storage capacity for electric vehicles. Additionally, of course, sulphur is absolutely affordable and abundant compared to cobalt and nickel, and that would mean lower costs. And since the manufacturing process for these batteries is the one exactly the same one used for lithium ion batteries, they can actually use the same factories for the production of lithium sulphur as they do for lithium iron. So advances in lithium sulphur batteries have now resulted in ultra fast charging and made them useful for raising the storage capacity of renewable energy. But one of the major drawbacks is corrosion. Uh, sulphur is a harsh chemical and they're trying now to make batteries with it and then come up with a solution to try and stop it corroding. They also find that at this stage the batteries don't last as long as lithium ion batteries, but this was said also of LFP batteries when they first came out and the advances in that technology were rather dramatic. Lithium sulphur has a place I'm not sure that this will be the answer for EVs. So how about just getting rid of the cobalt and we can feature cobalt-free lithium-ion batteries? So they're just lithium-ion batteries, but they just don't use cobalt. And the cobalt is typically only used to stabilise the cathode in a lithium-ion battery. So they can be used to power any device that's powered currently by a lithium ion battery. Uh, but much of the focus is now on trying to just get rid of the cobalt when you're talking about use in electric vehicles. These batteries are currently being used by Tesla in some electric vehicle models. And cobalt free lithium ion batteries could soon become a staple of other companies like Lamborghini are talking about them. And they've actually patented MIT's new battery technology that uses cobalt free lithium ion batteries. So the main advantage, well, it's a silly one because it's just that it doesn't have any cobalt in it. First of all, cobalt is incredibly expensive and the mining of it is associated with human rights. The United States Department of Energy is hoping to end the use of cobalt in lithium batteries by 2030. 
So for the moment, companies are just going to stick with cobalt until they can find something else that is designed specifically to meet the needs and does away with cobalt entirely. It is and space technology become mainstream. Now, lately, we've heard about iron ore batteries. This is iron, I-R-O-N, not I-O-N. Uh, so and then we come on to zinc-based batteries. Yeah, well, we used to have zinc. What was it? Zinc chloride batteries in the day. Uh, zinc batteries at the moment, very much like lithium-ion batteries, but they use zinc ions flowing uh, from the anode to the cathode, not the lithium ions. That's I-O-N-S. So there's a whole range of ones using zinc. So zinc bromide, zinc manganese, zinc air, zinc ion, ION. Uh, there's a huge potential there. Zinc is cheaper than lithium, although lithium is much more abundant. Again, we're looking more for solar energy storage because they have a very low rate of self-discharge. Once you charge them up, it just holds it there. So there are some companies already producing zinc air battery storage system and one was recently installed in New York 2022. They got a $400 million loan from the Department of Energy and that one's under trial at the moment. So they are capable of storing an abundance of energy and they hold it there. The materials used are affordable, non-toxic and readily available. But they've got a number of problems still, and one of those is the potential for them to short circuit. This is a well-known product with dendrites. They're not terribly efficient, they are expensive to buy, so these are not going to happen anytime soon. Now the buzzword for a few years was graphene. It's a single atom layer of material, amazingly light, and it has tremendous potential in a huge variety of applications. So graphene batteries really are an upgrade to lithium-ion batteries and they are expected to be used in the EV industry and that will be sometime within the next 10 years. Everyday devices, you can include smartphones, tablets, uh, laptops, they could also be equipped with graphene batteries and you should get a little bit better performance. They are much more conductive than their lithium-ion uh, counterparts and that gives them faster charging, uh, particularly in EVs. They have an increased capacity and an extended uh, lifespan. So this is starting to look like a very reasonable material to research and it will also lower the risk of battery explosions and fires. Problem at the moment is the sheer cost. Graphene is horrendously expensive. So the companies are now trying to figure out, is there a way to get these into mass production? But at the moment, it is way too expensive, totally inaccessible to the general public. Well, that completes the roundup of where we are. There's a few uh, real gems in there, but I think the, uh, the, the big promising ones are going to be solid state, certainly. Uh, they're also the uh, lithium sulfur batteries, which shows great potential, and a big drive towards cobalt free lithium ion batteries. Anyway, that's my opinion. Let's see what happens for the future. But I wouldn't hold your breath. A lot of the companies that are developing these, and some of the ones I've mentioned, they're talking about a decade before anything is released. And some of them are talking up to 20 years before they're going to be getting into mass production. So in the short term, we're going to have NMC for the more powerful cars and longer range and performance cars and LFP batteries, which are cheaper to produce and uh, but will have a lower power density and a slightly shorter range, weight for weight. So don't expect anything soon, but there's some exciting things in there happening. And of course, we never know with technology. A breakthrough could have already happened yesterday, uh, but we're not going to hear about it. Certainly, some of this is top secret. 
companies do not want to launch and release whatever they're, they're developing until they are ready to launch it. So much of this is uh, behind the scenes and every so often one of them will just pop out and we'll go, wow, this might be a sudden way to get rid of uh, lithium ion batteries in both uh, NMC and LFP guises. Well, thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave.